April is a rather somber time for us anime fans. We have lost one of our most precious girls, but with that, we have been blessed with one of the greatest anime of all time. Filled with raw emotions and music, Your Line April delivers one of the most impactful stories to ever grace this world. Regardless of race, gender, and religion, we have all shed tears over this masterpiece, and I can't wait to talk about it and how good it is in this video. My name is Noble Koa, and there you go. That was my line April. I rewatch it because, you know, April, but I just noticed all too many flaws this time around. It was immature, silly, obnoxious, the characters are iffy to say the least. So today, I know Boakoa will be asking the question, is Your Lie in April a good anime? And will be answering why it really isn't. And I'm just realizing this now, but oh god am I gonna get lynched for this. And yes, there will be spoilers for the ending, so here is your warning. And also, I'm preemptively asking all the diehard fans out there who love this show to leave because I'm gonna say some things you won't be happy with. But if you can handle it, Watch till the end because I have some criticism that I think are very reasonable. So if you come to agree with me or just enjoy the content, like and subscribe, it really helps out a lot. Arima Kosei, a childhood piano prodigy, quits the piano after the tragic death of his mother, which sounds very familiar. Oh yeah, Osamake. I noticed this time around that Your Line April has a shocking amount of similarities to Osamake. Kosei is basically just a characterless character. Watari is the fuckboy Ayanokoji equivalent, both charismatic, handsome, and players. Tsubaki and Kuroha play the same roles as childhood friends. This show, like it or not, has many similarities to that absolute horrid show. But I have to admit that this show is better. But sadly, not by much. But anyways, his mom dies, he stops playing the piano, his childhood friend Tsubaki likes him, but there's a new girl. Kaori is a new girl of the show, and she is just a manic pixie dream girl. The show treats her as this perfect, super talented, outgoing person, but she has some hidden traits. She is a completely selfish, inconsiderate, and violent asshole. I'll get into that in a bit though. Kose, who can't hear music anymore because of trauma, one day meets Kaori through his friends Watari and Tsubaki because Kaori apparently has a crush on Watari. We get introduced to the main cast and things are going pretty well. A tight bond is quickly established between Kose, Watari, and Tsubaki. The art is stunning, they even use CGI pretty well. What more can we ask for? Of course, a lucky skebetrope. While Kose takes a picture of something, a gust of wind blows Kaori's skirt up and she beats him up. Kaori then has to go to a violin competition, and the other three go to watch her. And this is when I see the first instance of a really big problem in this anime. The world revolves around Kosei and Kaori. The moment Kosei walks into the auditorium, everyone is all like, Then we see Kaori's performance, and her too was, Oh my god, so talented and quirky, she just owns that piece of music. There's no one like her, she is just so perfect. And that might come off as just me being a sassy asshole for a bit, but no, not really. They more or less say everything I said there. I just made it a little more valley girl. To really drive home this point that she is perfect, everyone bravos and encores after her performance, which... Who the fuck does that in a competition? The show seems like it is trying to glorify Kaori so much that she doesn't seem human anymore. The show never portrays any flaw that she may have. For example, like I said earlier, she is not a good person, and I hate this lack of knowing when a character is an asshole in the anime community. Her being cute doesn't mean she is a good person. Her dying doesn't excuse her actions. People have to realize that an asshole is an asshole is an asshole regardless of their circumstances. And I am gonna die on this hill that she is not a good person. Here, I'll tell you some reasons why. She constantly freaks out and beats Kosei up, forces him to do something he doesn't want to with the guise of saying that this will help him, and is just simply selfish. You might be saying, oh, the violence is just comedy. No it isn't. It was never once funny, and if you think violence is funny, there's another problem. If not that, you might be thinking, Oh, but she is dying so she's living how she wants. And yeah, but she can do that without harming other people and being a nuisance. You might even be thinking, But she has growth. Um, no she doesn't? She simply doesn't. The only somewhat valid argument, believe it or not, would be that she is just a cute anime waifu, because at least then, we are acknowledging that she has no excuse for the way she is. 
hey, but she is pretty, I guess. And this would all be fine if the show didn't treat itself as deep and thought of Kaori as virtuous and kind. Kosei acknowledges her selfishness, but the show doesn't treat it as such. They treat it more as her being an outgoing person wanting to help someone who is scared of change, which is just twisted beyond belief. Hey, if the show knows that she is an asshole, go for it. The biggest example of her selfishness would be where, after her perfect performance, she wants Kosei to be her accompanist for the next performance, all while completely disregarding his past. Kosei was abused by his mom as a kid, and he has this little Stockholm Syndrome thing going on where he loves his mother, and he is the only one on her side because he knows why she is like that. And in return, the show tries to say that the abuse had justification and was okay, which it isn't. His mom was straight up evil, but they tried to show her as a tragic figure who only does what she does because she is dying of a disease. No! Guys, I can't believe I have to say this, but abuse, no matter the circumstances, is not a good thing to do. And if the show can't portray this heavy topic in an appropriate manner, it would also work if they just completely removed it. Because right now, it is just trauma porn, in the sense that his past isn't deep, but it's just needlessly tragic. And the similarities a show portrays with Kaori and his mom was supposed to represent him losing someone again, but I think it really represents that both of the people dying are doing very wrong things while using their declining health as an excuse. Anyways, Kaori gets Kosei to help her in a totally nice, empathetic way. She bugs him everywhere he goes about it, puts papers all over his room which he then has to take off, and finally, she bitches and she moans. If he doesn't want to do it, if it will hurt him, he doesn't have to do it. But this anime is garbage, so he gives in and does a thing. And even at the second competition, everyone is all like, But at the actual thing, he kind of messes up. Kaori then forces him to do another performance, but solo this time. So he practices and practices, suffers and suffers. And this part of the show really bugs me. It is okay to quit. It is okay to leave something painful in the past and move on. While it isn't glorious to quit and move on, sometimes that glamour just isn't worth the pain you must endure to stay stuck in the past. It is shown how painful this is for Kosei, and the show acknowledges his struggles of piano being all that he has, but him not being able to play the piano makes him feel worthless. If that's the case, then go find something that you are worth for instead of going back to the painful past and digging up an already closed casket. That's what a place further than the universe did with this plot. And that was a masterpiece. The main character didn't feel her worth in life and wasn't doing anything with her youth, so she goes to Antarctica with her friends to find a new passion. Kosei should go to Antarctica. This show's main theme even is just twisted, wrong, and can be actively harmful to some people. A big motif in the show is color. The depiction of how the characters feel are often represented with color. So when Kaori seems down, Kosei says, And yeah, I have to agree, Kaori is making his life more colored. Colored red from his blood because he keeps getting beat the fuck up by Kaori. We see the guy bleed really often, which is really odd. No, but seriously, it does have an interesting motif. It shows Kosei's grades all life, and his past almost seems like a gloomy jail. This was a very neat touch. So then, they should use it more. They should use it in the performances. As of right now, the performances are just like the battles in Sword Art Online. They serve the simple purpose to just show us that they are so good, talented, perfect, good, and talented. But it just had so much mispotential. Maybe, when they play, we get to see a bit more of their psyche. Like the last performance, where he gets transported to that made up realm to show how he is feeling. They should use this more. Maybe during everyone else's performances, we get shown a bit of their mood and how their style of playing artistically portrays that emotion. While for Kosei, it is just robotic, desaturated, and lacking of emotion. Especially because they already go into the idea of emotions of someone playing. They kinda do this when Kosei goes underwater for his playing, and the background when Kaori is playing turns into a vibrant yellow to represent the sun. And even me, an amateur editor, can create this, with many flaws of course, so imagine what a whole studio with professionals could cook up. Your Lion April has some really neat ideas, but doesn't know what to do with them at all. The abuse could have been handled well. A tragic past was perfect ground to show you that you can move on, and even his nickname, the Human Metronome, had a lot of potential. He was called this because his mother abused him to the point of playing perfectly, 
While most people have emotions while playing music, Kosei is only playing for the empty reason of satisfying his mother. And because that is all he ever did, he is now empty without it. This creates a clash of ideas between his style of robotic playing, which shackles him to the past, and Kaori's free way of playing and looking into the future. The show should be about breaking free from the past to find new meaning in life, and that you can be ultimately happy. They can even still do the death to create a bittersweet ending where they lost someone, but Kosei has now found new meaning in life and can cherish their moments but move on. The show ultimately does the same thing, but in the exact opposite way. The show is actually about having to go to the past to relive it and face it head on to ultimately be happy. Even Tsubaki, a relatively good character, falls into this. She is caring, fun, Genki, and not normally violent. Tsubaki has a crush on Kosei, but she sees some distance being created as Kaori moves into his life. It should be okay for her to move on and love someone else, especially because the show sets up this other dude. This guy, the older, handsome, charismatic senpai, likes Tsubaki and she did once too. She could get a happy ending if she realized that staying hung up on Kosei isn't healthy and that she should move on. And she can even stay by his side as his best friend or an Onechan figure. You don't need to be fucking the guy to be close with him. This show gets the big emotions and ideas right, but the hidden, more subtle ones are very messed up. It really pains me because of how good the main themes were set up, but then utterly decimated. And even the route they ultimately went for could work to some degree if the characters weren't complete assholes. For example, this little B-plot of Watari with his soccer team was short, but had a way bigger impact than anything the show tries to do. He loses a big game, but needs to put on a facade that he is still okay with it because he is a captain and needs to be strong. Then, he goes to the bathroom and balls his eyes out. That was good. It had the emotional impact you were looking for. I genuinely teared up at this moment a little. Do this for the rest. Use more Watari. I like this guy. But sadly, the show seems to really hate Watari because of the ending. If you know, you know. But if not, don't worry because I'll talk about it later in the video. In the midst of that, Kaori has some problems with health, and even when watching it for the first time, I could predict that her ass is dying. Someone is dying, Tsubaki is struggling due to insecurity about herself and Kosei, and we see the most emotional part of the show. Tsubaki was piling up all her emotions to seem strong, but she just lets it all out, and this created a really touching moment. This goes to drive home the point that they can still be together while not being together. Next, we get introduced to two new characters, and their existence really made it clear that everything revolves around Kosei. Emi and Takeshi have been training all their lives to beat Kosei in a music competition. This drive sprung from a deep-rooted hatred for him because he is just oh so too talented. So, as any sane person does, they give up their chance to go overseas to a big competition and possibly make themselves known to the world in their first debuts to go to a small local one with rumors that Kosei might be there. Kosei really is just music Kirito. And to elaborate further on that, this really is just a shonen. Even the way the plot is set up, a character, with something holding them back, tries his best with the power of friendship and love to achieve his goal. Sound familiar? Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, one Punch Man, Black Clover, My Hero Academia, I can go on forever, but you get the point. This show really isn't special with its plot. You might be thinking that the ending makes it special, but at the same time, a show is not worth watching if you need to watch the whole thing before it is worth it. That's why even when suggesting anime to people, I tell them to try the first arc, and if they don't like it, it isn't for them. And I'll get to the ending in a bit after I explain what happens in between. But don't worry, it'll be pretty fast as nothing really plot heavy happens in between these episodes. They're mostly filled with pathetic attempts at character growth by having Kaori be an asshole. The competition happens and results don't really matter. Kaori gets hospitalized again. She and the crew are scared, but Kaori and Kosei get closer together and they promise to play in another competition together in April. You see where the lie is? By this time, I expected the characters to have developed and, you know, not be assholes, but nah. Of course not. Well, after that gross oversimplification of the plot, which is also surprisingly really accurate, we are in the last episodes. And this will be more of a play-by-play -play analysis, so once again, spoiler warning. And holy shit, I am really gonna get publicly executed for this, but 
Who cares? Let's go. Kari needs to get a big surgery, and she does. Kosei goes to a piano competition, and I have to say again that him going to a different world to express his psyche was very neat. It was very subtle, and everyone pretty much understood that this was what they were going for. Then, of course, they have to again do a, Oh my god, Kosei is so good, look at the color of his playing, by two different people too. Anyways, yeah, yeah, he has a sad color, he summons the power of all his friends, and then Kaori dies during the performance. The art is truly beautiful during this whole time, and the music he is playing is a nice touch. Kaori's spirit shows up in this little world, and the clear sky in the background shows that Kosei is finally free from his past thanks to Kaori. But her spirit being there also means that she has died. He gives off a melancholic look of acceptance as he watches the playful free playing of Kaori. They give understanding looks towards each other without talking to not interrupt the piece all while communicating. This kind of subtle stuff really gets me going. Then, Kaori starts to fade away at the climax of the song into a storm of cherry blossom petals which signifies spring and a new beginning. Kaori's last look towards Kosei shows her shedding a single tear, accompanied with a quick ascending arpeggio as Kaori's soul unrightfully ascends to heaven. Almost as if she knows that their time together can no longer be. And with that, the performance ends off with a mournful solo of a man who just lost something precious. That part was very subtle, the audience knew what was up even without them blatantly saying it, it was emotional even though I cared about none of them. I felt myself tearing up a tiny bit, but it's not like I care about them or anything. Wow, I just did a tune that I didn't I. But seriously, with the sheer amount of time I've spent on the show and video, I did have some attachment to the characters even with their many glaring flaws. This whole part was thoughtful, it did its job, now let's just end off strong with the final message from Kaori. And if I go missing after this, know that one of the fans have gotten me. But it would end strong if the final letter was actually good. The letter was just a collection of all the flaws I've mentioned projecting onto a paper. This letter was not deep at all. It wasn't emotional at all. Guys, dying doesn't make it automatically deep. She basically says that she was always in love with Kosei. I mean who wasn't in the show. Then, she lived her whole life for Kosei and even started music because of him. Again, this world really revolves around him. Then comes the biggest fuck watery ever. She apparently never really liked him and was just leading him on to get close to Kosei. And that was a lie in April. Well, there was also the one where they promised to play, but this was the main one. When she learned that she wasn't going to live much longer, she said screw it all and started living her life fully and started doing whatever she wants, at the cost of others. She knew that Tsubaki was in love with Kosei and just fucked shit up anyways, knowing that her involvement will mess things up. And the show wraps up with Kaori's final I love you and thank you. So is Your Lie in April a good anime? I'm sorry to say, but no. It had zero self-awareness with how shallow its plot was, none of the themes were morally right, the characters are all assholes, the only good characters were hated by the show. Hey, Hikaru Nara is a pretty good song at least. But yeah, this show really disappointed me this time around, and I don't think that this show was nearly as good as it could have been, especially with all the cool stuff they set up. I thought that it might just be me going too far into this reviewer thing and that I was just nitpicking at every little insignificant mistake, but no. These were all big genuine flaws of the show now that I think about it again. Your Line April uses the carapace of a sad death at the end, but that doesn't really change the fact that the rest was… yeah. Well now, you know a complete online stranger's opinion on Your Line April. It was time well spent though. My name is Noah Boakoa, please no death threats, and thanks for watching.